Shortly after Will Smith slapped Chris Rock at the Oscars, the movie Bad Boys was finally released. This is one of the best action comedy films of the century. If you follow the sequel, then this recap will be perfect for you. How could it not be? The chemistry between the two characters is getting better, and the plot has developed in line with contemporary comedy. There are many surprises. Watch this recap until the end. The movie Bad Boys Ride or Die begins in Miami where we see detectives Mike Lowry and Marcus Burnett. Mike is driving too fast through the city on their way to an event. Marcus complains about feeling nauseous due to their lateness, which he blames on Mike. He begs Mike to stop at a store so he can buy ginger ale. Reluctantly, Mike agrees but gives Marcus 90 seconds to make the purchase. Inside the store, Marcus not only grabs ginger ale but also a hot dog. Suddenly, a gunman enters and attempts to rob the store, threatening Marcus in the process. Marcus warns the gunman about his formidable partner Mike, who is likely to arrive soon. As predicted, Mike enters the store, annoyed at Marcus for buying snacks. A scuffle ensues during which Mike shoots the gunman in the leg. The scene shifts to Mike's wedding ceremony. He is marrying his physical therapist, Christine, who treated him after he was shot in the previous movie. At the reception, Marcus gives a speech. Then he experiences severe chest pain that leads to a heart attack, causing him to collapse. The scene transitions to a dreamlike sequence where Marcus relives memories with Mike. He meets his old friend Howard at a beach, who reassures him that it is not yet his time to die. Weeks later, Marcus wakes from his unconscious state and starts walking out of the hospital. Mike, noticing this, follows him to the roof of the building, where Marcus confesses his lifelong fears and newfound sense of freedom, believing that it's not his time to die. The two share a heartfelt hug. Elsewhere in Miami, a helicopter lands and a former DEA officer named James McGrath meets with a bank clerk to coerce him into transferring funds into an account under the late Captain Howard's name. McGrath's men shoot the clerk's security guard to intimidate him into complying. After the transaction, McGrath forces the clerk's girlfriend to shoot the clerk and then herself. Back with Marcus and Mike, they drive together and Marcus is now feeling fit, though his wife insists he rest. Upon arriving home, Marcus is greeted by family and friends, but is dismayed to find that all the snacks have been disposed of following the doctor's orders to prevent another heart attack. The family has now adopted a vegetarian diet. Later, Mike is tormented by nightmares about his past. News spreads that the criminal department suspects Howard was involved with cartels, a claim that Marcus and Mike vehemently deny, believing it to be a smear on Howard's legacy. Judy, now distrustful of everyone, including Mike, blames him for her father's death. Frustrated, Mike visits Armando in prison to seek information about the cartel, hoping to clear Howard's name. Armando provides evidence that Howard was not involved with the cartels. Meanwhile, McGrath and his goons attempt to access Howard's accounts, but they inadvertently trigger a fatal safe that sends a video message from Howard to Mike and Marcus. They both receive the message, and Marcus is amazed that Howard is texting them from beyond the grave, finding humor in the situation. In the video, Howard explains that if they see this, it means he is dead. He warns them of rats within their department, urging them not to trust anyone. He also reveals that he is being set up for something that dates back over 20 years. McGrath and his goons then prepare to take out Mike and Marcus. Mike urges Marcus to leave the mission to him alone, believing it's too dangerous for Marcus. Marcus insists he isn't afraid of dying and begins taking risks. As they leave, they spot KB Lane and follow him to Fletcher's club to inquire about Howard. Fletcher anticipates their visit, but before he can reveal crucial information, McGrath shoots him in the head. McGrath and his goons then pursue Mike and Marcus. During the shootout, Mike experiences a panic attack in the middle of the road but Marcus arrives just in time to save him from an oncoming vehicle. The goons escape before Rita and her officers arrive. Mike and Marcus withhold information about Howard's tip from Rita while informing her that Howard has been framed. They also discover a video from Fletcher, which he was supposed to show them earlier. In it, Fletcher explains his involvement in a cartel case and why he kept Mike and Marcus in the dark, citing the deaths of two other detectives, Rhea and Sanchez, who were also working on the case. Howard's message reiterated the presence of cartel rats in higher positions within the department. Back at the prison, Armando notices he is about to be attacked by some of McGrath's goons and prepares himself. A fierce battle ensues and Armando eliminates them one by one before the police arrive and apprehend him. Mike informs them that Armando was almost killed and pleads for his transfer to a secure prison in Miami. The authorities agree, and Armando is transported via helicopter under the supervision of Mike and Marcus. However, McGrath and his gang have already hijacked the helicopter. They force the pilot to send a distress message framing Mike and Marcus for the attack before McGrath escapes after an extended battle. 
Mike Marcus and Armando fight off McGrath's remaining men while trying to save Armando from being thrown out of the open hatchback. After freeing Armando, they make a crash landing into a lake and lead the authorities to the crash site. The distress message frames Mike and Marcus, but Reed, listening to the message, does not believe they are capable of such actions. Nonetheless, Mike, Marcus, and Armando are labeled as fugitives, and McGrath places a $5 million bounty on their heads, enticing every gangster in Miami to pursue them. Mike and Marcus follow Armando, who is now on the run. Marcus sees this as a good opportunity for Mike to bond with his son, but neither is interested in connecting, they want to clear their names. The next day, they change their clothes and acquire a new vehicle. After driving back into Miami, their truck breaks down. Mike goes to meet a contact named Tabitha at her club to get guns, clothes, and a vehicle. In exchange, she demands Mike to spend the night with her, however, Tabitha pretends to help them but actually stalls to allow other gangsters to capture the trio for the bounty. Meanwhile, the cops receive a tip on the location of the bad boys. As they leave the building, rival gangsters including Manny the Butcher, who wants revenge on Mike for injuring his hand with a meat hammer, open fire. Manny's ambitions are short-lived as the guys board a van, crush Manny into another car, and then hit him with a Molotov cocktail. The next day, they visit Doran and discover he has been secretly involved with Kelly. They are unhappy with Armando joining Mike and Marcus, but they all agree to focus on the mission at hand. During their investigation, Armando finds a picture of McGrath. He recognizes the face but not the name. Mike calls Rita to inform her about the situation and also provide proof to clear Howard's name. Meanwhile, Doran checks the security cameras at both Mike's and Marcus's houses and discovers that McGrath had sent men to capture Christine and Marcus's family. Mike tries to contact Christine, while Marcus gets in touch with Reggie to warn him about the incoming threat. Reggie takes Teresa, Megan, and little Marcus to a hidden location while he grabs his gun and puts his combat skills to use, taking out 17 goons and keeping the family safe, finally earning Marcus's respect as he is genuinely surprised by Reggie's capabilities. However, Christine is visited by Callie, who offers to help prove Mike and Marcus's innocence, but McGrath's goons have already made their way inside. McGrath contacts Mike and offers to return Christine and Callie unharmed if he surrenders Armando and all evidence related to Howard. Armando is willing to turn himself in, but Mike has another plan, knowing that Rita's boyfriend Lockwood has been feeding McGrath information on their whereabouts. Mike then calls Rita who immediately leaves her home but as she does, Lockwood tries to attack her. Dorn and his girlfriend arrive just in time to help her. The team prepares for their final mission to resolve everything and rescue Christine and Callie. McGrath and his goons receive a call from Mike, who disguises his voice as Lockwood. Christine then confronts McGrath about the changes in his appearance, particularly his hands, but he is distracted by her questions. Meanwhile, Mike and Marcus finalize their plan and assign roles to their team. As they proceed, they discover a deadly alligator in the area. McGrath and his goons move toward Lockwood, while Mike aims at McGrath. However, he starts to have another panic attack, fearing he might hit Christine. The alligators in the water move closer to where Armando is hiding, cluing McGrath into someone's presence. Before a goon can spot him, Armando shoots, causing the goon to fall into the water and get eaten by the alligators. A fierce battle ensues between McGrath, his goons, and the bad boys. Meanwhile, Lockwood tries to escape using a plane, which Rita sees and shoots down, causing the plane to crash into a nearby building. Mike and Marcus find themselves in a tough situation as Marcus falls into the same river where the alligator resides. Despite the danger, Mike still believes he is untouchable and cannot die yet, although this proves to be a difficult assumption. The alligator attacks Marcus, but Mike comes to his rescue. Meanwhile, Armando fights off McGrath's goons to save Callie. McGrath continues to hold Christine hostage as they are now on the run. Lockwood then shoots Dorn in the arm and tries to shoot Rita, but she kicks him into a pit where the alligator resides, and Lockwood becomes the alligator's prey. The federal agents arrive at the scene. Meanwhile, Marcus sees the same tree he saw when he lost consciousness. McGrath then captures Marcus, promising Mike that one of his loved ones will die today. Mike asserts that Marcus can't die as he is untouchable, which scares Marcus. Mike then shoots at McGrath, hitting his vest and proceeds to finish off McGrath while Marcus is overwhelmed with emotion. Nearby, Judy finds Armando and prepares to execute him. But Callie intervenes telling Judy that Armando saved her life. Judy hesitates and lets Armando go. Mike assists Armando in escaping as the authorities arrive at the crime scene and arrest McGrath's surviving goons. News reports state that Howard has officially been exonerated. Later, Mike, Marcus, and their loved ones gather at the park for a barbecue. Reggie brings his chicken and asks if he can grill. 
The bad boys laugh him off for a moment before remembering that Reggie killed McGrath's henchman and saved the family so they agree to let him grill. Reggie then gives a satisfied smile. The movie then comes to an end.